Hello, my name is uh, Jill Weibel. I'm a board certified dermatologist, um, owner of the Miami Dermatology and Laser Institute. I'm the chief of dermatology at Baptist Hospital, and I'm voluntary assistant professor at the University of Miami Department of uh, Cutaneous Surgery and Dermatology. Um, well, that's actually an easy question. Um, really, all scars are minimal to laser therapy. I think the, the, one of the biggest breakthroughs in the last decade is that fractional lasers can treat all scars on all patients of all ages, on all skin types, and all body areas. So almost every scar will improve with laser treatments. Um, we always have to take, when you're treating any um, patient for any type of laser procedure, you always have to look at the entire patient. So, you know, one bad candidate, uh, sometimes young children don't handle the anxiety, the fear of a laser device. Um, I do a lot of burn patients, a lot of trauma patients, and sometimes they have post-traumatic stress. And those patients can sometimes have a hard time in your office, so you might have to take those to the operating um, suite. Um, and then lastly, patients that are very fragile medically, um, although I think lasers are better for them than, than some of the medical therapies. So there's no true contraindications uh, for laser therapy, but you always want to, you know, give a thorough consultation, get a good history and physical um, before you progress. Uh, traditional laser uh, rules apply. You don't want to ever laser over an infected area. Um, you have to be careful with people that have photosensitivity disorders such as lupus. But um, for scars, I always say, you know, really, um, the sooner you get the laser on it, the better. So um, I think one of the most rewarding things I do in the practice, in my practice, is treating scar patients. Um, disfigurement is actually the number one most distressing thing that can happen to a human being if you look at studies that have been done. And it's very rewarding to take a patient and be able to help them significantly with the lasers and take them from a, a fairly figured sc disfigurement scarred place to almost normal. Now we can't make them perfect but it's incredibly rewarding work. Um, the patients are so grateful. So I think you know, in, in my opinion, if you have a laser and you've been doing wrinkles and aesthetic work, which is what most of these lasers came to the market for, it's a lovely transition to start to do this scar work. Um, but, you know, it's the patients um, are a little more fragile, especially ones that have, you know, I treat wounded warriors uh, coming out of the war as well as, you know, children that have been in burn fires. Um, there's usually not a good story associated with someone that's been in a severe burn or trauma accident. So your staff has to be very caring. You probably have to handhold a little more. Um, you have to have an understanding of that process and make sure you have the right team of doctors. Yeah, so, you know, for both a plastic surgeon's office or a dermatology office, um, you know, I think you look at what types of patients that you have when you're going to add lasers and also what you're interested in. Um, you know, there's so many different types of lasers. If you're a, a plastic surgeon or a Mohs surgeon and you actually are creating scars as part of your work, you're going to want to get a, probably a vascular laser like a pulse dye or a broadband light laser that's going to help with those initial scars. Um, if you're in a, a practice where you're doing a lot of cosmetic work you're gonna, and you have a lot of wrinkles, you're going to want a resurfacing laser. Um, if you're passionate about getting rid of tattoos, you may want to add that. So I think, you know, it's important to look at your existing patient population. And then I always think for physicians, you know, we're so blessed. Um, we can choose to do what, what's exciting to us and what's rewarding. Um, some of the newer lasers on the market uh, have multiple lasers in the same platform and so you can buy one piece of equipment that might have three or four different devices in it and that's a really great way to start out because you have lots of options um, it's it's a better bang for your buck 